function of the marble gates is to stop the queues of the marbles and distribute one marble to the charge pos position, like so. And I redesigned this system six or seven times in the summer. I, I rebuilt this whole thing lifting fingers because I just didn't find good enough solution and this was at the end something that worked because you only want one marble here and you want to stop the queue. So I have 22 marble gates in total for the whole machine. 11 on the vibraphone, 2 for each drum and 4 for the bass. When I don't want the vibraphone to play, I can mute it by doing this. So this mute system stops the marbles on two places. This is the first place with this system that takes the first marble, like that. It holds this marble. But it also pulls this thing up. And this metal wire goes straight into the marble gates and holds the second marble in place. If I go slowly, there is a little metal thread coming up to holding the second marble in place. Once more. You see all these springs and all these metal threads, they go straight up into the 22 marble gates. You see here, if I pull this lever, this one engage up and down like that. Of all the design mistakes I made, and there are so many, uh, I think still the mute system is the Achilles heel of the machine. It just drops marbles it shouldn't drop, and after unmuting it sometimes behaves badly. The timing of each note here is decided on a screw that is up here on the machine. You see this screw there? You see it, Hannes? Yep. For example, I say this note, which corresponds to the low C on the vibraphone, uh, is a little bit too early. Let's say it's too early. Then this lifting finger is too much like this, and then we can adjust that by screwing this clockwise. Like that. Sorry. And you will see that it goes like that. The programming nail will hit this lifting finger later and the C of the vibraphone will play a tad later which will make the machine tight. So how many adjustment screws are there? There's 22 adjustment screws just like there's 22 marble gates and 22 lifting fingers. These marbles are 11 millimeters steel ball bearing marbles. There's 2000 of these marbles in the machine and the marble cycle is starting here in the logo with the flip-flops. You can also see when you play the low notes of the vibraphone with this flip-flop like that. And then they get divided in, inside of the machine and they get picked up down here. Where the transport belt picks them up. And they're released up here. And then the marbles go down in the tubes and they go out to the marble gates and they get dropped in the instruments and back in the funnel and then they're in the logo again where we started. Yeah, how to waste your time. Nah. Now we come to the part of the video that I actually look forward most to. It's all the design mistakes and they are overwhelmingly many. When I was working on the machine it was like I was working with the trial, error and failure method and just trying things out and I think my first and foremost design error was that I underestimated the power of the marbles. They are like water, they like just flood everything. They just find their way like they make a hole in the mountain after hundreds of thousands of years, you know, stuff like that. So marbles has been falling everywhere and they still do. Another big problem is that this programming wheel is drifting slightly, which of course makes the registration less than perfect. And the whole thing is very top heavy. I love this design of this like thin, thin legs, thin tapered legs. 
but I loved it a little bit too much, I think. So because of this top heaviness, the machine will rock back and forth like this. And while releasing a marble and rocking back and forth like this, that reduces the precision a lot. And uh, the list goes on and on. Another problem is that we have this tear on the programming pins. And when they get damaged, they stop registering the note and no note will come. And this, for example, is due to the fact that this lifting thing, this marble gate here can't move up here. It smashes this, this bolt here like that. And it's just badly designed. When, when I'm playing the machine, when a song is fully programmed, all these design mistakes, even if they occur very randomly and very, like there's 30 and 40 things that could go wrong and they occur very seldom, it's still too many things that could go wrong. So it's malfunctioning a lot. And while we were filming the video, we took a lot of takes to get that done. So I know I can make it work actually flawless. I know I can make it work flawless, but it came to a point where shit, I've spent a year on this now and I want to go out, play music live and I want to make new songs and I want to post much more new music instead of just building. So I'm gonna leave this machine now for a while and I dream secretly about perfecting it and probably I will, but uh, right now I want to make music. How to wrap this, how it works video, I would like to show you how the song works. Oh, smart! Smart, Hannes! To wrap this how it works video up a little bit, I wanted to show you how the song works. And uh, especially how the bass works, because the vibraphone and the drums, they are... The programming wheel is like a loop, so they play exactly the same over and over and over again. Just when the programming wheel goes round and round. So to alter that, I tried to change the bass line and the bass chords on the second revolution of the programming wheel. So you start, when the song starts, you're in a kind of E minor world, like... full revolution and the vibraphone keeps on playing the same thing but the bass line alters from E minor and goes down to C major like 